Welcome to the channel, subscribe or dale like if you like it. Today we will explain the active principle ocrelizumab, its side effects, its doses, contraindications, warnings, mechanism of action, intentions, pregnancy and lactation. What is ocrelizumab? And what is ocrelizumab for? Ocrelizumab is a medicine used for the treatment of multiple sclerosis, MS, and this medicine belongs to the pharmaceutical company Roche. The brand name of ocrelizumab is Ocrevus. Mechanism of Action of Ocrelizumab Recombinant humanized monoclonal antibody that acts selectively on B lymphocytes expressing CD20. CD20 is a cell surface antigen found in pre B lymphocytes, mature B lymphocytes and memory B lymphocytes, but not expressed on lymphoid stem cells or plasma cells. Therapeutic Indications of Ocrelizumab Treatment in adults with recurrent forms of multiple sclerosis, MS, with active disease defined by clinical or imaging features. Treatment in adults with early primary progressive multiple sclerosis, PPMS, in reference to the duration of the disease and the level of disability and who present inflammatory activity in imaging tests. Dosage of ocrelizumab To reduce the frequency and severity of perfusion-related reactions, administer the following two pre-medications before each ocrelizumab perfusion. 100 mg of methylprednisolone, or equivalent, vial 4, 30 minutes before each ocrelizumab infusion. Antihistamine, 30 to 60 minutes before each ocrelizumab infusion. Additionally, pre-medication with an antipyretic, for example, acetaminophen, may be considered. Intravenous perfusion. The initial dose of 600 mg is given in two separate intravenous infusions, first a 300 mg infusion followed by a second 300 mg infusion two weeks later. Subsequent doses, a single 600 mg infusion every six months. A minimum interval of 5 months must be maintained between each dose of ocrelizumab and the next. Adjustment in case of perfusion-related reactions, RRP. Life-threatening RRP, if signs of life-threatening or disabling RRP appear during perfusion, such as acute hypersensitivity or acute respiratory distress syndrome, discontinue perfusion immediately and administer appropriate treatment. Suspend ocrelizumab permanently. Severe PPR. If severe PPR occurs, such as dyspnea, or a combination of symptoms such as hot flashes, fever, and sore throat, discontinue perfusion immediately and administer symptomatic treatment. Resume perfusion once all symptoms have resolved, at half the rate of perfusion at the time of the reaction. Mild to moderate PPR, if a mild to moderate PPR appears as a headache for example, Reduce the perfusion rate to half the rate that was being used at the time of the event. Maintain it for at least 30 minutes. If tolerated, it can be increased later according to the initial perfusion pattern. Mode of administration of ocrelizumab. Ocrelizumab is administered by intravenous perfusion through an exclusive line, after dilution. Ocrelizumab perfusion should not be administered by rapid for injection or bolus. Side effects and adverse reactions of ocrelizumab Upper respiratory tract infection, nasopharyngitis, flu, sinusitis, bronchitis, oral herpes, gastroenteritis, respiratory tract infection, viral infection, shingles, conjunctivitis, cellulitis, cough, cold. Decreased immunoglobulin M in blood, decreased immunoglobulin G in blood. Neutropenia Reactions related to perfusion. Other adverse reactions identified after evaluation of pharmacovigilance data, association between decreased immunoglobulin levels and severe infections. Contraindications of ocrelizumab. Hypersensitivity to ocrelizumab. Active infection present. Patients in a severe immunocompromised state. Known act of malignant neoplasms. Warnings and precautions with ocrelizumab. Children and adolescents under 18, no safety or efficacy studies. Elders over 65 years of age. Perfusion-related reactions, PRR, which can e star related to the release of cytokines and other chemical mediators. They can occur in any perfusion, but most often during the first one. 
PRRs can occur within 24 hours of perfusion. Before perfusion, pre-medication to reduce the frequency and severity of PRRs. During perfusion, if severe respiratory symptoms, such as bronchospasm or asthma exacerbation, occur, stop the perfusion immediately and permanently. Administer symptomatic treatment. Monitor the patient until respiratory symptoms have resolved. If a hypersensitivity reaction is suspected during perfusion, perfusion should be immediately and permanently discontinued. After perfusion, monitor for at least one hour after completion of the perfusion for any symptoms of RRP. Inform the patient that PPR may occur within 24 hours after perfusion. Risk of hypotension as a symptom of PPR. Consequently, Consideration should be given to discontinuing antihypertensive medication within 12 hours prior to perfusion and during each perfusion. Hypersensitivity reaction can occur during any perfusion, although it is common not to occur during the first. If new, or more severe, symptoms than those previously experienced occur in subsequent infusions, a possible hypersensitivity reaction should be considered as soon as possible. If a hypersensitivity reaction is suspected during a perfusion, stop it immediately and permanently. Do not treat with known hypersensitivity to EGA mediated ocrelizumab. Infections, inactive infection do not administer until the infection is resolved. Risk of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, if suspected, suspend ocrelizumab. Conduct an evaluation that includes magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, monitoring preferably with contrast, compared to pretreatment MRI, testing of cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, to confirm the presence of John Cunningham virus DNA, and repeated neurological evaluations. If PML is confirmed, discontinue permanently. Risk of reactivation of hepatitis B virus, HBV, before starting treatment, perform HBV testing according to local guidelines. With active HBV, for example, Active infection confirmed by a positive HBS AG and anti-HB test, they should not be treated. With positive serology, for example, for HBS AG and plus for HBC AB plus, HBS AG plus carriers should consult liver experts before starting treatment and should be monitored and treated according to local medical guidelines to prevent reactivation of hepatitis B. Risk of malignant neoplasms Discuss individual benefit and risk in patients with known risk factors for malignant neoplasms and in patients in active follow-up for recurrence of a malignant neoplasm. Patients with a known act of malignancy should not be treated with ocrelizumab. In other autoimmune disorders, concomitant use of ocrelizumab with immunosuppressants, for example, chronic corticosteroids, biological and non-biological disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, fame. Mycophenolate mephido, cyclophosphamide, azathioprine, resulted in an increase in severe infections, including opportunistic infections. The following factors associated with the risk of severe infections were identified higher than recommended doses of ocrelizumab in MS, other comorbidities, and chronic use of immunosuppressants or corticosteroids. The concomitant use of other immunosuppressors is not recommended except corticosteroids for the symptomatic treatment of relapses. When starting ocrelizumab after immunosuppressive treatment or when starting immunosuppressive treatment after ocrelizumab, consider the possibility of overlapping pharmacodynamic effects. The safety of immunization with live or live attenuated vaccines after treatment with ocrelizumab has not been studied, and vaccination with live or live attenuated vaccines is not recommended during treatment and until B lymphocyte repletion occurs. Because of the potential for B cell depletion in children of mothers who have been exposed to ocrelizumab during pregnancy, B cell depletion in these children should be monitored and vaccination with live vaccines and live attenuated vaccines should be delayed until the child's B cell count has recovered. Ocrelizumab Interactions No formal drug interaction studies have been conducted, as no drug interactions related to CYP or other metabolizing or transporting enzymes are expected to occur. Pregnancy and Ocrelizumab Ocrelizumab is a humanized monoclonal antibody of the immunoglobulin G1 subtype, and immunoglobulins are known to cross the placental barrier. 
there is little data on the use of ocrelizumab in pregnant women. Consideration should be given to delaying vaccination with live or live attenuated vaccines in neonates and infants who have been exposed to ocrelizumab in their mother's womb. No data have been collected on B-cell counts in infants and young children exposed to ocrelizumab in the potential duration of B-cell depletion in infants and young children is unknown. Peripheral B-cell depletion and transient lymphocytopenia have been reported in infants born to mothers exposed to other anti-CD20 antibodies during pregnancy. Studies in animals, embryo-fetal toxicity, do not indicate teratogenic effects. B-lymphocyte depletion was detected in the uterus. Reproductive toxicity was observed in pre- and postnatal developmental studies. Use should be avoided during pregnancy unless the potential benefit to the mother outweighs the potential risk to the fetus. Breastfeeding and ocrelizumab It is not known if ocrelizumab is excreted in human breast milk or if it has any effect on the infant or milk production. Animal studies have shown that ocrelizumab is excreted in breast milk. Since human egg is excreted in breast milk, and since the absorption potential of ocrelizumab is not known to cause a depletion of B lymphocytes in the infant, women should be advised not to breastfeed their children during treatment. Effects on ocrelizumab's ability to drive There have been no studies of the effects on driving in machine use. Pharmacological activity and adverse events reported to date do not indicate that such effects are likely.